Hello and welcome to section 10.7, our last chapter in section chapter 10. Uh, here are the answers to 10.6. Make sure that you're checking for those extraneous solutions. Those are the numbers that solve the equation, but when you plug them back in, they don't actually work in context of the problem because we don't have negative lengths. So there's a lot of uh, extraneous solutions in these problems. A lot of quadratics, a lot of algebra. All right, we're going to be working with equations, and this, by the way, is 10.6 extension. I sometimes teach this section, and sometimes I don't. So if you're seeing this and you don't, I didn't assign it. That's totally fine. Um, if I did, those are the answers. Uh, we're going to be working with right equations of circles today. Uh, this is something you're going to see in Algebra 2. You're going to see it in Precalc, maybe. Uh, this is probably one of the more, more important sections of the chapter in terms of what you're going to be using in the future. Um, and so basically, the equation of a circle that is centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is basically the Pythagorean theorem. You can come up with any point on the circle by using this formula, where r is the radius. So here is a basic equation. So there's the origin right there. To do this, you're just going to write x squared plus y squared. You're going to have your two variables, x and y, just like if you're writing a line or another equation, you always have an x and a y in it. And then you write what r is in the square. So r is 3, 1, 2, 3. So equals 9, 3 squared. That's all you got to do. Now, if the equation is not centered at the circle, let's say it's centered anywhere other than the origin. Um, I might have misspoke there. If the equation is not centered at the origin, is what I meant to say. So if it's centered at any other point, then what you're going to use is this formula here, and it is the distance formula. Uh, you may have recalled, may have seen or looked at that and recalled, oh, that looks like x minus x1 squared plus y, y, so x1, sorry, x2 minus x1 squared. All right, I'll just write it up here. You guys may have seen this formula, or like recall it. So it, uh, it very, looks very similar. In fact, it, they're the same, they're just different letters, that's all. And then what the book does to find the standard equation, note it down here, the only thing that they do is they square both sides. By squaring both sides, you end up with the r squared. And when you square both sides, you get rid of the square root symbol there. And so that's how you come up with the standard equation of a circle. So x, y are just your variables. H and K represent the center, and R represents 30. So I'm going to show you guys how to apply this formula here, what you guys need to know. Um, this one here is center at the origin, so you can just do your X squared plus Y squared equals 2.5 squared, which is 6.25. Here, we're going to do R squared. I'll start with the R squared. 7 squared equals X minus negative 2 squared, so x plus 2 squared, and then plus y minus 5 squared. And that's all you need to do. That is the equation of the circle. That is centered at negative 2, 5 with a radius of 7. OK, here we have uh, the center point is at negative 1, 3. And they give us another point. You have two options here to find the radius. So they give us a center point. That's easy. We can just do x minus negative 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared. Now we've got to find r. Well, this is kind of nice because you can just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 squared is 25. Let's pretend, though, that that wasn't, it wasn't on a whole number. If that happens to you, here's what you're going to do. You're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and you're going to make a triangle. And you're going to use the distance formula. And you're going to do 4 squared plus 3 squared equals x squared. That will, or equals x. That will allow you to find that value there, the radius there. So you may have to use the Pythagorean theorem if the, if the number isn't a whole nice number like this one was. So keep that technique in mind. And here they want us to graph the circle. So what we're going to do is identify the radius, r equals 6, and then identify the center point, 4, negative 2. Notice how they're opposites of what you think they'd be. 4, negative 2, and then the radius is 6. So 
I'm going to use my circle tool. And what I'm going to do is start there and go out six units. And get as close as I can. There we go. Your, per your circles might not be as perfect as mine. That's okay. I'm using technology. Just sketch it the best you can. Okay, here's a couple more examples. I'll do one more of these. Um, let's do this second one here. The center point is negative 8, negative 5, and the radius is 11. So we're just going to plot a point at negative 8, negative 5. And then go out 11 units. And try to be as accurate as I can. There you go. So that's all you're doing when you're graphing. And that's all I'm going to do for you guys today. Here's your assignment. Thank you guys for tuning in. And that's the end of chapter 10.